Okay, so sign off is the basics of the kettlebell. Kettlebell swing, okay? Foundational movement of our kettlebell, and it's a hip dominant movement, okay? So we want to be here, using our hips, okay? We don't want to be seeing big knee bends, squatting the kettlebell like this. We want to be a hip dominant movement, posterior change, driving the bell from my hip. Nice way to set this up, if you're new for it, use the wall, stand yourself about half a foot away from the wall, and from that point there, hands on your hips, big chest and big bum, push your bum back towards the wall. Okay? And that is how I'm trying to keep my bum on the same height as my hip. Okay? So I'm trying to push my bum back towards the wall here, keeping my soft knees. I'm not sitting down, so you notice the way the bum's this height, and I'm staying here rather than coming down. Okay? So as soon as I bend my knees, it means I'm sitting down. We don't want that. So keep soft knees, keep your bum high. So once you push your bum back towards that wall, what we're aiming for, somewhere between, provided mobility um, allows you, somewhere between 45 and just above parallel um, spine to the floor. So from this position here, if I take about an inch forward, and then push my bum back, okay? So roughly this sort of position is where I want to be achieving. Stick my hands between my legs, and that's my cover, okay? From here, I'm going to drive my hip, which sends the kettlebell out. It's my hips that drive the bell, not my arms. So as I'm here, my hips do the work and allow my arms, to like a pendulum, just holding on to the kettlebell to come forward, okay? As they, the weight comes down, allow the weight to pull you down. So as the bell comes down, allow the bell to pull you back into this position, push, push your bum back towards the wall, then before you resend the bell up. Okay? What you don't want to do is push your bum back and send the bell down here at the same time. So as I said, if I do that, the weight is now actually shifting this way, which is putting more shear and force on the spine. What I'd like to do is, like I just said, let the kettlebell come down and drag me through. Okay? Keeps you nice and tight towards, um, towards yourself and keeps you in a bit of a strong position. So if I've got the kettlebell, as I push my bum back, you can see I'm keeping everything nice and tight. And this is my drive. My arms are just holding on to it. I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling here. Okay, it's not an arm movement, it's hip. Lap, relax the arms, hip driven movement. Okay, that's our basics. Progressing on from your double swing, we're gonna to go to a single swing. So your single swing pattern is no different from your double swing. Hip dominant movement, okay, and I'm here. Only difference changes as I go from one hand. With the one hand, sometimes you might find it puts a little bit of a rotation through the spine, but the structure of a big chest and big bum does not change, okay? Still softening, still hip dominant movement. Allow yourself to do whatever you want with that other arm. Some people flare it, I think I do. Some people keep it still. Do what becomes natural, okay? So, to go for a single swing, start off with your double swing, and then take one hand off and just do repetitive um, swings on one side before you start exchanging. Get comfortable with the single swing, what it feels like, before you start changing over. So start off with the double swing, and then when you're ready, just take one hand off and just swing, okay? Hit a few swings and then change over. Okay, one nice little tip when you're single swinging is that thumb, as you come down, allow that thumb to point backwards, okay? Allow the thumb to come point backwards and then bring the hand back to neutral as it swings up. So as it comes down, thumb points back, thumb pushes back, as it comes back up, hand comes back to neutral. If you get exchanging each time, you're just gonna thumb back, from neutral, from back, from neutral. Okay, so that's your look. Something on the lines like this. From back, changing over. As you get more confidence, 
to exchange each time. Okay, so next kind of common swing you might see is an American swing. American swing being double hand, and that's the only time really you're going to put any effort into pulling with the arms. As the bell comes up, it becomes weightless, and all you're going to do is pull your elbows up to bring that cowbell above your head. Kind of don't overcomplicate it more than that. So once you've got your double swing going, and it's hip driven, as the bell comes up and it becomes light, all you want to do is pull those arms up. And notice how I'm keeping the bell close to me, so the bell's coming up here, or I'm being out here. So as I drive that hip, my arms are just pulling up, cowbell keeps facing forward, and then I just bring the weight back down and allow the weight to pull me back. Okay? So, driving up, framing the face with my arms, but it's driven from the hip and assisted with my arm. Okay, so the next one we're going to be looking at is the clean. So the clean can be done from static or from a single swing. So either combination, um, it requires a pull up of the elbow and a punch through of the arm. This will allow the kettlebell to roll round your arm rather than coming and crashing on your arm. A lot of the time, any crashing on the arm is either technique, poor technique, or you've got a uh, too light a kettlebell for your hammer effort you're putting into it. Okay? Predominantly, if you've got a light bell and you're throwing it around really hard, it's when it's going to leave contact with you and crash down hard. Okay? So it's if you do get that, that's one of the two um, things that are going to be going on. So from, um, I'm going to go from a static clean first. So as I come up from the floor, I'm going to pull my drive from my hip, elbow's going to come up, and then from here, my elbow is going to shoot down and punch up. Okay? And I'm going to end up with the kettlebell sat on this arm and a praying palm to centre of my chest. Whenever you're doing any type of kettlebell work that's coming from a clean position, palms always want to be in the middle, okay? From here is where the kettlebell sits on my arm like a table. So I'll show you that now. So from here, I'm going to pull up and punch through. Up, punch through, okay? As I was just saying, palm to center of my chest. Wants to be here, not here. Okay? From here, the kettlebell is dragging my arm and my shoulder around. I do not want that. If I put it here, to a point, I can kind of relax with the kettlebell on my arm. Okay? This is almost, well, this is your rack position once you've cleaned it. So you just, you can take a bit more time in this position than if it's out here dragging your arm backwards. Okay? So, from the floor, Elbow, rack in. Elbow, rack in. From the front, elbow, rack in. You can see how the kettlebell rolls round as I punch that arm up. Contacts, rolls round, rather than coming up and crashing. So when it comes to the clean from a static position, that's what we've just done. The swing makes no difference. As I, as I swing, elbow comes up, elbow comes under, okay? So from a single swing standpoint, from here, here, there. Swing, pull, punch. Pull, punch. Pull, punch. Pull, punch. Okay? And then you get the um, kettlebell into your rack position. Right, so progressing off our uh, clean, we're going to go to pressing above head. So once you're pressing above the head from your rack position, um, you'll find you, from the rack position, you naturally kind of lean back slightly, um, just to kind of counterbalance the weight you've got in front. From here, praying palm, you're going to press the bar, uh, the, the kettlebell, sorry, above your head. You don't have to completely Hold on to the kettlebell, you can have a nice relaxed hand. 
Okay? So from the center of your chest, you're going to go straight up. Okay? There is no need to press from here out that way. Okay? And coming back down. Wants to come from the center of your chest. If you need a little bit of leg, using a little bit of leg, pressing from there. So you can strip press it, which is no leg. You can push press it using a bit of leg, so dip and drive, or you can jerk it, which is a double knee bend, so dip and then re dip underneath to stand up. Okay? All of them are three different variations of the press, so a strict, a push press, or a jerk. Okay, so our last movement for some basics with the kettlebell is the snatch. One of the harder, more technical movements most people are going to endure when it comes to any kettlebell work. So with the snatch, it can be driven from a static position or from the single swing. Um, same idea as with the clean, that pull and punch through with the arm. Only difference being, rather than pulling here and punching my arm to the centre of my chest, I'm going to pull my elbow higher and then punch through above my head. Pretty much as simple as that. So rather than pull, punching, pulling here and punching through here, I'm going to pull through and punch up there. Okay? Same idea that like kettlebell will run around your arm and you'll end up above your head. Okay? So if I go from a single swing position, so I'm single swinging and I'm pull, I'm going to punch. So from here is your choice. You can bring it back down and swing from there. Or, if you've got a bit more confidence, externally rotate the arm and allow the kettlebell to roll straight round and pull you through. Rolling round, pull and punch. Rolling round, pull and punch. Or, down, swing, pull and punch. Again, elbow pulls back, arm punches up. Pull, punch. And again, the bell shouldn't crash on my arm. Okay? Okay, so the last exercise within our Kettle Basics is going to be the windmill. The windmill looks a lot easier than it is, and predominantly most of the time most people struggle with it is because they try to laterally flex with the kettlebell rather than allowing their torso to roll forward. Um, so, from um, a uh, bell above head position, we're going to roll our torso forward in this position, okay? So with the kettlebell, it's gonna look something lump like this, okay? You only come as low as you comfortably can. Some people can come lower, some people can't. Um, that's gonna be down to mobility, and that's only gonna be improved with practice. So, from this position, we're going to push the hip towards the side we've got the kettlebell. And as we put the other hand on the leg and use this as a guide of support over on the way down, we're going to push our bum backwards. As we push our bum backwards, we're going to allow the torso to roll forwards. And we come down as low as we can, and we're going to come back up. So, making sure it's a hip bum back and torso rolls forward in this position rather than I'm here trying to laterally flex here. It's only going to get to a point where I can't move anymore. My hips are blocked and I can't go anywhere. As soon as I push my bum back, hips are released and I can take the movement. Okay? Only work with the range of motion that you feel comfortable to and one side may be better than the other, it's completely natural. Make sure you're working on both sides to their fullest movement. So if one side's lower than the other, <clears throat> doesn't matter. Work with the fullest side of movement on each side, but just make sure on your more limited side, you work um, a little bit more to increase that range of motion. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it, okay? So just kind of recap, and I'll do it on the other side. From this position, you can come narrower or wider leg, it's up to you and you might find you may want to bend a knee one way or another as you're doing it. 
Um, and that's fine. Something to work towards is keeping straight knees on both legs, but that's something to work towards. So from here, same arm as kettlebell, I'm going to push my hip towards the same side as that, using the handle <clears throat> on the inside of my leg. I'm going to let my torso roll forward, pushing my bum back, keep an eye on the kettlebell all the time. Last thing I want to do is be looking at you or looking somewhere else where I don't know where that kettlebell is. As soon as I look at the kettlebell, I feel under a lot more control and just coming all the way back up. There's your windmill.